I am now exiting from Belmont Park. Today is Sunday, June 5th. 2022. There are still some customers left in the stadium. I guess they'll be making other bets at other races in the simulcast. Anyway, I'm through. For the day, I did not do well at all. I did pick two winners, but I also picked many losers. So, the net result was a loss of some money and a determination to hopefully do better next time. At any rate, I'm on my way out on the track. As you can tell from this video, this is a massive place. Massive. This place can easily hold over 100,000 people, including standing room. The stands themselves can probably hold 50,000 which is tremendously large for a racetrack. Uh, next weekend will be the Belmont Stakes. And race fans are very excited about that. It's always the biggest race of the year. In the United States and it's known around the world yeah, a little just uh, doing some experimentation with the, with the camera Okay, we're outside now. I plan to walk to the Queens Village train station. And that's what we're going to be doing. Here's the UBS arena. Here's the track. There's the station. And I'm glad that you are joining me in this walk.
right now we're walking almost due west you now the sun is shining at us and so that means we're walking due west because the sun rises in the east and sets in the west so this is late afternoon and if the sun is in front of us that means we're walking west now there's UBS arena again okay This area used to be a parking lot. And now you have a sports arena there. I'm astounded over how huge amounts of money can be expended to build a sports arena while there are people living on the street in New York City and elsewhere. But that opens up a, a political can of worms. See, this is this is the um, exit from the highway. So, gotta watch out for automobiles. And I don't think they would stop for somebody just because they're crossing the street. Or in this case, uh, the exit ramp yeah, there's the UBS arena again there's some electronic equipment you gotta watch where you how you walk here you have to be careful all kind of ruts and rocks and objects and whatever you can step on and sprain your ankle or at least create a very annoying feeling and right now we're headed towards Hempstead Turnpike towards a boulevard which becomes Hempstead Avenue once you cross over into Queens. Let's take a look at this again. Okay. Thankfully, the weather is nice, sunny, warm, but not blazingly hot. Humidity is relatively low. So that's 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 good. I had to be late still walking and, and the comfort level in general. You see, now we're walking in the direction of the sun. It means we're walking west. This is a an entrance ramp to the Cross Island Expressway. There's cars, gotta wait. A lot of cars are gonna wanna enter the ramp and they're not gonna wait and they're not gonna stop to let a pedestrian uh, cross, cross the street, cross the ramp. So I gotta wait until uh, the no walk uh, signal becomes walk signal. Then meanwhile, as you can see, despite the very high price of gasoline today, it doesn't stop people from driving. 
there's all kind of reports of get of hardships as a result of the high price of gasoline but as you can see a lot of cars are on the road it's not stopping people from driving and burning up gasoline in fact there might be more cars now than ever on the road okay so my turn but <laughs> as you can see uh, two automobiles went right through the red light now this is an overpass okay this is Hempstead Turnpike or Boulevard here's the highway now another thing you have to look out for if you're a pedestrian are bicycles believe it or not a bike bike bicycles on the, on on sidewalks and pedestrian areas that was that is now becoming the norm in new york city and elsewhere so at any time there could be somebody bearing down on you with a bicycle yes a bicycle Okay, at any rate, yes, the cost of gasoline is not stopping people from driving. Okay. Okay, yeah, this is the Cross Island Parkway South, and and uh, a, a, a driver was kind enough to let me cross the street here, which actually surprised me. Okay, but I took advantage of that. So you know, once you take advantage of it of any small acts of kindness. As for the big ones, well, they may not really be acts of kindness. Okay, but that's a philosophical issue. Okay. Here's a empty lot. Oh, we're in Queens, by the way. This is now Hempstead Avenue. Here's a, here's a bar. Looks like a very nice, nice establishment. And this is a, a street. Okay, I have. Okay. By the way, this area is. Uh, some may call it South Jamaica, some may call it Springfield Gardens, some may call it other names that may not be as uh, so complimentary.
2K. This is 222nd Street. This area is primarily residential, but like everything else in New York, it's mixed uh, residential and commercial. There are very few areas in New York City anymore that are strictly residential. The zoning laws have been so drastically amended as to make uh, the concept of a strictly residential area in New York City obsolete, passe, history, whatever. Uh, there's one of the nice buses. Oh no, and that's a city bus. Right. It's not in service, by the way. What else is new, right? Not in service. Okay. Now, we're crossing the street again. Another street. All right, this street is uh, 221st Street. Okay. Okay, somebody did a number on this uh, bus stop here. You see that? So, don't have to make any further comment about that. Okay. Okay, still on Hempstead Avenue. Not too many people out in the street. Now this area is probably considered to be more of an unsafe area, you know, personal security wise, but I think that concept is obsolete. Now I'll tell you why. Because the whole city is actually one big unsafe neighborhood. There are no areas anymore that one could consider to be safer than any other area because of all kind of changes in demographics. Demographics, social relationships, politics, whatever. You know, it's a multifaceted reason. I, and I really am in no position to really espouse in that in detail. Now I caught that motorcyclist making a turn with the uh, muffler and I'm making a huge amount of noise. See, that's another very common occurrence now in New York City and elsewhere. The advent of, uh, of the, or I should say the proliferation of motorcycles, you know, with uh, defective uh, mufflers. It's very common now. To, to observe that, to witness that, for that to happen. So, now, this is Springfield Boulevard. So, I'm gonna make a right turn now. That's another thing, the horn honking. honking. There's huge amounts of horn honking in New York. Huge. It doesn't take much uh, to set off drivers to start honking their horns. It's, it's really incredible, something that must be heard to be truly appreciated or unappreciated. 
Okay, now we're walking north. Now the train station is about three or four long blocks away. Okay, for now, this is uh, some kind of church, I believe. Oh yeah, this street contains uh, several churches. They may not look like churches in the conventional sense, but I guess they are. At least they represent themselves to be. Okay. Got to look to make, see, make sure there's no bicycle or bike person bearing down on me. Because that's, as I mentioned before, a very common occurrence. Okay. Okay, we're still proceeding. There's some kind of school, or maybe it's just a school. Okay, could be a public school, could be a private school, who knows. This is 100, 100th Avenue. Yeah, see, Bible school worship service. Very nice. Okay. Now, you may have asked yourself, why is this fellow, meaning me, walking to the Queens Village Station when they have a station right next to the track? And I can only say, you must ask the Long Island Railroad about that. These very nice roses. Oh, look at it. Roses, very nice, very nice. Very nice, very nice. You have to ask the Long Island Railroad. Because I don't understand it either. Now, in a way, I have a vested interest in, in that subject as I go to the track. And for me, it would be helpful if, if Long Island Railroad provided more train service to the track. But they don't. And there's nothing I, as an individual, can do to alter that. So it's just the way it is. Okay, in the meantime, okay, no bike. Okay. Station isn't too far away. There's the tire place. Con they're constantly busy. Never, been, never, never gone by this place where they're not busy. After all, don't, don't automobiles need tires? The answer to that question is yes, they do. They do need tires. That's why you have a tire place. Now, I think I'll attempt to cross the street. As you can see in the video, there is, of course, traffic. And this is despite the high level of gasoline. It does not stop people from driving. It's incredible. It's incredible. Okay. See, this is Sunday, so there isn't too much traffic on the street. But I can assure you, Monday through Friday, this street is very crowded with automobiles. And this is why the price of gasoline is supposedly escalating to the point that it's now a hardship for people. If it is, it hasn't yet affected their willingness to drive a car. Okay, so
Well, the station is nearby. It's next block. So. There's a catering place across the street. There's a empty parking lot. Long Island Railroad, daily commuter parking, $10 cash only. Okay. No standing anytime. Meanwhile, there's a car standing. Oh, that's another thing in New York City. Uh, enforcement of traffic laws and parking laws is spotty, at best, spotty. Meaning it's haphazard. And the laws are haphazardly enforced. Almost like on a selective basis, but that's all speculation. At any rate, this is uh, the under the underside of the station uh, above us here are the actual railroad tracks of the Long Island Railroad and there's a park across the street where people usually men hang out from time to time and on the other side of the park is Jamaica Avenue and this is the station and the next train headed west is in 42 minutes. So I have 42 minutes at 6.35. So 42 minutes more to go. And I think at this point, I'll turn off the video.